Well, I don't know if this is going to be the intro, outro, middle, um, right into, I don't know. Anyway, digging a hole. Uh, you know how they say if you want friends, just buy a trailer or a car lift? Uh, fine. Turns out, uh, you buy an excavator, all of a sudden you got all sorts of buddies you didn't know you had. Uh, but we got, uh, we want a two foot trench dug out to this uh, garage we're putting up here. Uh, stuff's everywhere because we got uh, moving sheds and all that good stuff. But anyway, uh, we're going two foot deep. Uh, if you wonder why I got painter's tape on here, it's uh, in the ballpark of two foot from here to the bottom edge of the bucket. Uh, just give me something to reference. But uh, I guess what I'm after here, of course now the screen goes black. Um, here we have a flare, flare, flare. Um, heat, infrared heat camera. Let's see. You can see she's pretty toasty. And you can see all the lines and the cylinders get good and hot. But the interesting part is how hot everything gets under here. Like I said, it's, uh, well, According to this, the grass is 48 degrees. So we're plenty chilly. Uh, the other day I put in that real bad rough shield just to try and uh, bridge the gap between the air filter and the exhaust. Because as we can see here, we've got uh, 400 degrees on the muffler. And then the air filter housing is still 130 degrees. So I don't know if I'm making a heat sink or making it hotter in there. Can you tell a difference between hoses on the hydraulic cooler? Because that would be kind of neat. Uh, this one's 100 and... Oh, it's going down. 80 degrees. That one's 120, 110. It's pretty good heat reduction. Pumps nice and cool. I guess 135, I don't know how cool that is. But, uh, yeah, so I guess I'm going to run this some more here. And we'll see how hot everything gets. Gas tank is 120 degrees already. So, heat. Oh, and uh, first major fail of the machine. I don't even know if it's major. Uh, choke cable's messed up. And um, this, is, this is just in here for show now. Wasn't even reefing on it. Just gave her a good tug and off that came. So, that's handy. Uh, day day three mod, we got some space blanket, some foam and more space blanket duct taped on here because this one is closer to your seat, so your leg rests right up against that. And currently it's 105 degrees, which is kind of nice and toasty on today's temperatures. But anyway, I'll do some more digging, see if I can get her a little hotter, and we'll mess around with this a little more.
couple other things of side note uh, to do with this uh, LS15R. Um, I'm not sure how normal people fill this up with gasoline. Um, the 12 that I picked up had a latch underneath the seat. This whole, whole dingus rolls up here and I don't know, unless you use like a one gallon can three times to fill that up. Uh, but yeah, anyway, let's get into the thermal here. I'm sure there's a way to make this thing record, but I don't want to mess with it right now, so. Okay, well, we're pretty, pretty leveled off at 356 degrees on the muffler. Then if we point over here, that's already saying 55. That can't be right. I guess that shroud might be doing something. Of course, that's saying 350 right there. Um, so let's take a shot of the air filter is 160 degrees housing. What's the carburetor? Uh, carburetor is 100. Carburetor's 118 degrees. So we must have some evaporative cooling from the gasoline going in there. Let's uh, take that shroud out. That's too hot anyway. So we're in the 200 degree range with that cheap piece of tin in there. So that tells me that I need to make that better. Uh, gas tank. is 135 degrees. Uh, this is kind of fun. Uh, the engine block, we're gonna crankcase, we're gonna call that 240. And there's some dirt in it. Well, you can't have that much water in there for worms. You're gonna drown them. Dump the water out, otherwise you're going to drown the worm. Not right here. Uh, anyway, uh, we got a hundred, let's see, 133 on the cooler on that side. I, don't, I can't get into the other side there, but. Hundred and thirty-two inside the cooler. Let's see what the top of the tank is. This is kind of fun. This might have turned into its own, own video here. Uh, the hydraulic tank itself is 140 degrees. Does that match up? Uh, Fahrenheit. That says it's uh, 60. It's 180. It says 87 degrees. Well, if you get the That's 95. That's not too far off. But, uh, what else is interesting? My armrest. 107 I got there. 117. That's warm on your leg. Uh, next, next thing as you can see, I dig with the the blade in the back. Yeah, but my local operator's union manual says that you should clearly dig with the blade in the front to avoid a front tip over. I don't care. Putting the blade in the back does two things. One, it moves your body and the arm further forward on the track so you can see what you're digging better. Also, put a bunch of weight on that blade. Um, get it tipped right up and then dig in just make sure that you're square because it is possible to hook the bottom side of your open wheel motors here. And when you're digging, that's what you want to do. So you want to dig across the top, curl that out, dump it back, grab it like two inches down, curl again, curl again, curl again, curl again, and then go down to the bottom and then steep drag up and get a full bucket and then clean out your 
uh, soft dirt and then just keep moving that back. So just start at the top, grab claw, grab claw, grab claw, clean it up and then big scoops to pull it out. Uh, it works a lot better than just trying to dig. The closer you get to underneath the machine, the more power that thing has. Uh, this quick attach reduces the amount of torque that you have on the bucket. Without this quick attach on there, you have more digging power, but uh, I would say that the quick attach more than outweighs what you wanna do. Lost my thought here. Quick attach makes it better and easier, so deal with the, deal with the weight or torque loss of your arm. But when you're digging, don't try to curl it all the way up. Stick it in the dirt like this and then push your arm down while you're trying to curl and pull back up. You'll get a lot more pull because then you have all three hydraulic cylinders working together if you pull in and up instead of just trying to use the bucket. Because when the bucket's way out like that, there's, there's not much leverage. Now you get the bucket curled in and you have a lot more dig. Um, I'll show you what I use for putting gas in. Uh, 50 state illegal gas can. This is a giant loop, three gallon uh, container, legal in Europe, um, not legal for gasoline use in the States. It is sealed up tight. It's a canvas bag. It is extremely strong. They test them by running over, running them over with trucks uh, full. There's no vent. There's no leakage. I don't like this part though. That, uh, but look at this. Straight through, no safety, nothing. Uh, there's a bladder in here that on Giant Loop's website is fuel rated, alcohol rated. Um, it's got all the ratings, but it's not a gas can in the United States of America. So anyway, there's that. And then you just take your, your bag and you know, you just squish it right in there. Full. Um, they're not cheap, but I don't know how else people are filling these things up. But anyway, um, I'll do some more digging and see what else I can come up with. Well, here's a pickle you might find yourself in. Uh, I want my trench to go from the corner of that old garage all the way to the corner of this new garage. But uh, I want it right up tight, and you can't dig it right up tight. If you just keep backing up, you're going to have like a two foot gap. So uh, what do you do? Well, I'm going to spin around, and I'm going to start at this corner, and I'm going to dig it backwards until I connect the two trenches. Then what? I'll show you in a moment. Cameras are super fun. Uh, hit the time lapse button, nothing happened. And you can't like redo it. So, anyway, uh, just pretend. Choop, 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 choop. Dug a hole. Um, This is where I might try my first voiceover. I uh, haven't done any, but uh, we're gonna set up on a very stable platform.
Testing, testing, check, check. First thing you do, put your music in so you can't hear anything going on. Second step, pick up your blade so that's not dragging on the ground. Unlock the coupler. Turn the machine away from the direction you want to go. Push down with your main boom, and then you try to turn your turntable and reverse the track that's on the ground. Now ideally, you would have enough power to just do this in a big hole you can use your feet to turn, but it gets pretty tricky trying to left side, right side. Basically, now that you're turned, you push down. You don't have to unpush, but get picked up so your bucket is supporting you on the far side of the trench and then you walk your tracks the direction that you want to go and once you get across the trench you pick up your bucket boom and then you just track off into the sunset like the majestic mini excavator operator that you are also i would suggest practicing this on a one foot trench or maybe just over a piece of wood on the ground or something two foot's not that far to fall into but it's still kind of sketchy